Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This is The Capable Mum, I'm Tammy Lou and thank you for joining me. Broken So this video is going to be about disciplining your child. I just want to touch on different methods for different ages. So starting off with toddlers, when children are that young, they're still trying to learn how to control their emotions, even older children, adults even. We all sometimes aren't able to really control our emotions that well. Um, but toddlers mostly find it difficult to control their emotions because they're so so young and these tantrums that they have these episodes of explosions they're all completely normal because kids that young don't really know how to filter their emotions and especially when they're not able to speak when they're not talking yet that's when their emotions are a lot more dramatic and um, just because they're unable to communicate and that's how they communicate through their actions whether it's them throwing their food on the floor because they don't want to eat it or whether they're stomping their feet to show that they're not happy that's how they show their emotions without speaking because they can't speak yet and even those who can speak they sometimes feel that they're not able to convey the message in the correct way and they're not able to express themselves so you would be dealing with toddlers differently to how you would probably deal with another child so one tip for disciplining toddlers would be to offer options now i say this because toddlers love their independence they're able to walk they're able to get around they love their independence they want to be able to do things by themselves they want to be able to feed themselves that's when they start becoming independent. So offering an option would make them feel in control. And so for example, if they don't feel like eating their dinner, okay, well, you could possibly offer them the option of what they would like to eat for their dessert. So would you like ice cream for your dessert or would you like a yogurt for your dessert after you eat all of your dinner? And they'll say, hmm, ice cream. And then you can say, Okay then, so once you've eaten up your dinner or once you've eaten most of it, you can have your ice cream. That is a good way to sort of distract them from what it is that they are complaining about or what it is that they are doing. So yeah, offering an option. Another tip would be to keep your cool. Toddlers mimic emotions, they react to emotions. I understand as parents it is completely frustrating sometimes when you know you just want your child to behave you just want them to act right and you have a lot on your plate and sometimes you have your own things going on and it's like you are a cup and you know someone's pouring into your cup you're going to end up overflowing because you know your cup is already nearly full so it's just, you know, trying to not react in a way that you wouldn't want your child to react. So, for example, shouting is another thing. And I know it's complete, it's difficult sometimes, like trying to refrain yourself from raising your voice, but they mimic your actions. They watch you. And if you're doing it, then it must be okay. You're the adult, you know best. So if you're shouting, then that should be allowed, you know? So just try to keep it cool and try to act in a way that you would be happy for your child to act. Another tip would be to analyze the situation. What triggered your toddler to act in a certain way? Was there a particular trigger? For me personally, one thing I would say is, and still to this day, I have a six-year-old and it's been the same way since he was a toddler. He likes to be given a warning before he is moving on from doing something to another. So I'll give you an example. My children play on their iPads and I allow them to play on their iPads for a short amount of time before bedtime. Some people have their opinions on that, but that's just what I do. Or it could be they might be watching a film for bed or reading the book, whatever it may be. I have to give my children, particularly my eldest, a warning 
before bedtime. So you have half an hour left. You, okay, now it's 15 minutes. Okay, now it's five minutes. Just because he doesn't cope well if I was to just say, okay, it's bedtime now and not give him a warning because he'll be enjoying what he's doing so much that he doesn't want to stop. Or oh, it might not even be a bedtime thing. They may just not want to move on from what they're doing in that particular moment that they're enjoying. When I noticed that, it helped me a lot by giving like a warning of how much time they have left to spend doing that particular activity, whether it's being on the iPad, whether it's watching television, whether it's drawing, whatever it may be, giving the, a warning, okay, you have this amount of time left. Frequent warnings helps them to be able to stop what they're doing without having a total tantrum. Now, I'm not gonna say that it works every single night because every single night is like my children. They, it's like they've never been to bed before in their life, the way they act. <laughs> it's like it is the first time I'm ever asking them to go to bed because I think it's a, it must be a child thing. Um, they just they just don't like bedtimes. But it does lessen the blow. For my child anyway, for my eldest, it does lessen the blow. I would say giving your child a where was I now? Completely lost track of thought. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it was, it was, I was talking about triggers. So just seeing what the trigger is. So in my personal situation, it was being told to do something when they're already doing something that they enjoy. So being told to do something else, should I say, um, when they're already doing something that they enjoy. So just find out what your child's trigger is. And I'll give another example. So for example, my child um again my eldest he likes to tell me what he wants for breakfast the next morning because it's not always the same every single day sometimes he'll get bored of a certain cereal or whatever it may be because i think there was one time where i had given him a certain cereal and i come downstairs and he's crying sat at the table crying and i'm thinking what's going what's the matter what's going on and he's like i didn't want to eat this i don't want it and I'm getting frustrated and I'm like, what do you mean you don't want it? You eat this all the time. And he's like, but I didn't want it this morning. And at that point, you know, when you're rushing and you know, you have school, you have work and there's no time, in your head you're thinking, oh, I don't have time for this right now. Just eat your breakfast. At that point, I was like, um, oh, come on, you know, just eat your breakfast. I don't know. And that's how I was acting. But then when I thought about it throughout the day, I did give him another cereal, by the way. But when I thought about it during the day, I thought, well, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And what he did that evening was he said, mommy, um, I apologize about how I acted this morning, but tomorrow morning, can I have this cereal? And I thought you've just made it easier for yourself without even realizing you've made it easier for yourself because you've just told me what to give you for your cereal so that you don't feel upset so i thought it's really clever and grown of him he's only six i think he was five at the time this happened but yeah just finding out what your child triggers are and trying to prevent it so when it comes to preschoolers your parenting may become a little bit different so the first tip i'll give is that you can introduce consequences. Introduce consequences. So for example, if your child is doing something that they should not be doing, or maybe you've asked them to do something that they refuse to do, you can introduce consequences. So the first time you can ask your child nicely, please don't do that, or please can you do this? If they continue to disobey, then you could ask them again nicely, but now warn them of the consequences that may come after. If they still choose to not listen, then that's when the consequence should be given. Now, saying this, I know sometimes as parents, and I've been in the same boat myself, sometimes <laughs> still do it, but I, I'm learning, it's a learning process, but I would say, let the consequence fit the action. And I'll say that again. Let the consequence fit the action. So I'll give you an example. If the child has done something 
naughty or maybe you've asked them to clean their room and they're refusing to clean their room, they don't want to clean the room, they're not doing it. It wouldn't make sense to ban them off the iPad for a full week. It wouldn't make sense to tell them that they are never playing with this particular toy ever again. It doesn't fit the, the actions. Of course you want them to clean their room, okay, because it's a mess, they need to clean their room. But telling them that they're banned from the iPad for a whole week and not allowed to play with that toy ever again, it doesn't fit the actions, doesn't it? It's not very fair. And I feel like consequences should also be temporary, dependent on, I guess, the action, of course. But in most cases, consequences should be temporary because each and every day is a new day, a new slate. Just as adults, we expect that, you know, a new day is a new slate forgiveness and all of that it should be the same for a child as well so a new day is a new fresh slate so for example if I've asked my child to clean his room and he refuses to do so then I'll say okay well this evening I'm gonna have to take away your iPad because you're not listening I'm gonna take you away your iPad this evening and then tomorrow We'll see how your behavior is. If you're good, then okay, you can go on your iPad again. If you're still not doing what mommy asks you to do, then we'll have to look at it again tomorrow. So that would make more sense. So keeping it temporary and not being completely harsh by saying, oh, never again will you play on this game. Or, you know, it just let it fit. Let, it, it, let the action and the consequence match. Also, make it realistic as well, because for example, if you're going to a family party or if you have a wedding to go to or a birthday party where the family is going and you're all going, it's been in the plan for how long and then your child does something naughty and you say to your child, everyone's going to this party, you're not going to the party, you're staying at home by yourself. Realistically, that's not going to happen. Realistically, everyone will be attending that party, including the child that you've told isn't attending that party. Obviously, he's not going to be staying at home by himself. Obviously, you're going to take him. It's a family occasion. So making sure that you're being realistic about the consequences that you give to your child because they remember and they listen. If you're telling your child that they won't be attending a party and then he attends, okay, well, mommy, what you're saying doesn't add up. So next time, mommy, I can do what I want to do and not really listen to you because now I know that what you say isn't really the case so yeah just be careful with that because there's times where I've done it because <laughs> sometimes when you're in that place and your your child's irritated you're starting to become irritated you just say things so just be careful with what you say another tip I would give is time out now I know some parents believe in it some parents don't I feel like time out now is sort of looked at as a punishment and I know there's a few there's different opinions on it some parents feel like it should be a punishment some parents feel like it should be time out for your child to calm down previously I used to use it as a punishment okay time out no more television time out and I just feel like it didn't really help but now, if I feel he just needs to calm down or she may just need to calm down, I'll feel like sending them to time out, but I explain why. And that's something you need to do. You need to explain why you're sending your child to time out. So whatever they've done, explain that, okay, you've done this. So I'm gonna send you to time out to just have a think about what you've done, have a think about why you've done it and have a think about what you could do better next time. How are you gonna handle that next time now? That is different. That doesn't seem so harsh because you're explaining to these, taking time out to explain to them, okay, you've done this, that wasn't good. Um, I need you to think about why you did that because I want to understand why you did it. And now that you know that's not the way you should be behaving, how would you do it differently next time? Um, the child will still be upset to go to time out, but you know, it's not as harsh as you saying, oh, go to time out, you don't deserve to watch television anymore. Just go, go to time out, you know? It's just different, it's the same consequence, but basically dealing with the matter differently. So those are my tips, because my children, I have a six-year-old and a four-year-old, so those are the sort of things that I 
incorporate into my parenting skills and it's to how I deal with them and it works for me and it may work for you too. But yeah, I definitely think that you should just try to analyse. Once you analyse and understand your child, you'll be able to spot certain things and handle it accordingly. My tips may not work for your child at all, you know? So you know your child best. So, but these are just sort of ideas that you could use, tactics you can use to incorporate into your parenting skills and basically uh, do as you please in regards to that. You know, as long as you are trying to understand your child and trying to make the situation better and trying to teach your child something, then it should be okay. But yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. This is my first video on my channel and yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoy it. If there's any other ideas that you can think of, um, please put them down in the comments. Please like this video and turn on your post notification bells to get notified whenever I post a video. And if you've watched this whole video right through, thank you so much for watching. Please follow me on my Instagram, The Capable Mom my TikTok, The Capable Mom, and I also have a blog where I post some of my personal experiences on there. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this and thank you for watching. Until next time.